Hey everybody, Aaron Cowan, Sage Dynamics. This video, we're gonna be taking a look at the Gold Dot G2 147 grain nine millimeter duty round. The G2 is generation two of the Gold Dot, a very venerable round. In fact, my, my preferred carry round. I'm a fan of HST as well, uh, but the Gold Dot has always done everything pretty well, so it's been a round that I've been trusting for you know probably the better part of a decade, uh, more or less. Every now and then I like to see what else is out there, but I always end up coming back to G or to Gold Dot because of the way it performs uh, during testing. I use the FBI's protocol to test my own personal ammo. Uh, with Generation 2, they've changed the design and they're following kind of a trend in introducing an elastomer or a polymer into the hollow point of the round, into the actual cavity. So Generation 2, comparing it to the first generation of Gold Dot, you've got a shallower hollow point cavity, but it's filled with an elastomer. The idea behind the elastomer is it performs a more, it, it can provide a more uniform expansion instead of relying on uh, material from the actual target impact, the intermediate barrier or the clothing or what have you, to provide uniform expansion for the hollow point. The elastomer is going to be able to do that uh, more efficiently uh, than what was what we've seen in the past with certain types of hollow points. And uh, Spear isn't the first company to do this, but it's the first time Spear uh, has released a gold dot with this particular technology with the G2 line. Normally, I'm not a fan of comparison videos. You don't see me do a lot of videos where I compare apples and oranges. I like products to stand on their own merit. However, with a Generation 2, I wanted to compare it to Generation 1 to see if there was a significant enough improvement to kind of justify changing from, from the first generation of Gold Dot to the second generation of Gold Dot, if Gold Dot is what you use. Now, for this video, I only have the 147 grain. I was able to get some a hold of some from a law enforcement contract, so this is straight from an LE department. Uh, not that that necessarily matters. If you find G2 on sale online, it's probably the exact same ammo that's shipping out to law enforcement unit, law enforcement departments that are purchasing it. Purchasing it. It is harder to get a hold of the Generation 2 round because of that. Uh, it's very, very popular. Um, I've, I'm seeing a lot of departments use it. Some departments have gone to it and then gone away from it. Uh, you can find information uh, out on the interwebs about people who have adopted it and then discarded it. And maybe some of the facts that we uh, present in this video may give you some evidence as to why or why not. Uh, the testing protocol is the FBI's testing protocol. I'm going to be looking at all my tests on 10% calibrated ballistic gelatin. I use clear ballistics because it's clear. Uh, even when a, a block has been reformed countless times, or not countless times, I keep track of that. Uh, even when it's been reformed, you know, 10, 15 times and it starts to discolor, you still get really good clarity from the block and it's been consistent. It calibrates consistently when I check my temperatures and I check my, check my calibration according to FBI protocol. Uh, now this is obviously not taking place in a lab, but I'm going to be doing the stage one of the FBI protocol, which is bear gel, heavy clothing. Then we're going to look at drywall, which is very common, uh, plywood, which is also very common in the exterior exterior siding of houses. Most houses have a plywood, maybe with a vinyl siding or something like that. But plywood is a very common intermediate barrier that is seen. We're also going to look at 20 gauge steel, uh, which is designed to replicate uh, a car door. And then, of course, um, usually the, the, the medium that most rounds have the biggest difficulty with is windshield glass. What I'm showing you now is the very specific details of the testing protocol for every intermediate barrier, including distances and the actual composition of the products that are going to be tested. These are designed to give you a, a baseline performance of the round through these intermediate barriers without having to try to account for all the uncontrollables, such as with drywall, you know, different paints. Like I said, with plywood, there could be a vinyl siding. Uh, and of course, plywood can also be encountered in the interior of homes and other, and other structures. Uh, windshield glass is pretty much uniform. Drywall is pretty much uniform unless there's some paint applied or something like that. So you can't really look at the uncontrollables of a specific composition, if you will, of an environment. So it's kind of a baseline testing. Of course, drywall can be weaker or stronger based on the environment that the round is used in real life. But for testing protocols, we want to use something as uniform as possible so it can be as scientific as possible. Like I said, not doing this in a lab, but I am doing it according to their protocols based on their measurements, their distances, the materials recommended, these are the materials that I'm going to use, the angles, everything else. Uh, so I'm going to make this as scientific as possible. We're going to be doing a head-to-head -head between the Generation 1 and the Generation 2 of the Gold Dot, working our way through uh, all those testing protocols, every stage. And the very first thing we're going to do is take a look at the round's performance on bare gel. I share the opinion of a lot of the uh, other people who test ammunition out there, FBI included, if a round doesn't perform well on bare gel, if I don't get uniform expansion and good penetration, what we're looking for is that 12 to 18 inch sweet spot penetration through 
all testing, but on bare gel. If the round doesn't perform well there, it's probably not going to perform well on any of the other testing. So up first, we're looking at the Gold Dot's performance on bare gel. Gen 1 Gold Dot had 15 and a half inches of penetration, which is right in there between that 12 to 18 inch sweet spot, which is what we're looking for. Wound channel was consistent, flight path was good, and it had 0.56 inches of, of uniform expansion. Generation 2 Gold Dot had 18 inches of penetration, good wound cavity, good flight path, with 0.62 uniform expansion. Uh, it, it's, it's definitely a more... Um, aggressive uh, hollow point as far as you know when it when it actually uniformly uniformly expands uh, it's a little bit more aggressive compared to the original the, the generation one gold dot next up is heavy clothing and this is a test for me personally this is one of the two tests that i look at most critically with a rounds performance we're looking at the generation one the original gold dot 147 grand its performance it had 18 and a quarter inch penetration with 0.53 expansion. Uh, pretty, pretty uniform expansion of the hollow point there, which is what we want through heavy clothing. Because if you clog a hollow point to extreme upon entry into the target, it can actually prevent the hollow point from expanding. And if the hollow point doesn't expand, it can lend itself to over penetration or extreme change of flight path. Next up on heavy clothing, we have the Gold Jot Generation 2. We had 15 and 3 fourths of an inch penetration with ununiform expansion, fragmentation, and the round actually rotated 180 degrees. The first test I did, uh, the round exited the block. There was an extreme deviation in flight path. I wasn't able to recover the bullet, uh, which is problematic. And this is, again, my opinion, but for me, one of the two tests that I look at most critically is heavy clothing. And I wasn't really impressed with the, the Gold Dots, the G2's performance on heavy clothing. Moving on to drywall. This is a very real concern because drywall is probably one of the most common, at least interior, uh, building media, intermediate barriers you're likely to encounter. You see a lot of people using doorways as cover, which means they're placing the, the, the majority of their critical mass, their high thoracic cavity, maybe even their head, behind door, behind drywall, behind a door frame, or using a wall itself as cover, something uh, similar to that concern. So drywall penetration is something we definitely want to look at. Looking at the Generation 1 Gold Dot, we had 18 and a quarter inch penetration with 0.54 expansion. The round did rotate 180 degrees, which is somewhat problematic, but after 18 inches of penetration, I'm, I'm still impressed with the performance, and it's pretty uniform with what I've tested Gold Dot Generation 1 in the past. Drywall performance with the Generation 2 Gold Dot, we had 13 and 3 fourths of an inch penetration. Uh, 0.65 expansion. There was a partial rotation of the round. It kind of tipped its nose up uh, when, it, when it kind of expelled the remainder of its energy during, it, during its entry into the block. Uh, not bad. It still falls within that 12 to 18 inches, but I, I kind of expected a little more, especially when I look at how uniformly the, uh, the hollow point expanded. Moving on to the plywood test. Up first is Gold Dot Generation 1. We had 15 and a quarter inch penetration with 0.63. Pretty uniform expansion, no fragmentation, good flight path, good wound channel. Looking at plywood with the Gen 2, the Generation 2 Gold Dot. We had 12 and a half inches of penetration uh, with 0.767, sorry, expansion. A little bit more expansion than we had with the Generation 1, but as you can see, there's a definitive difference. Um, it wasn't just a, a fractions of an inch uh, with the actual penetration. Um, it's a little bit problematic, uh, but again, plywood is a pretty, pretty robust medium. Uh, so if you're still getting at least 12 inches through plywood, the round is still performing well. Now we're looking at those two pieces of 20 gauge steel which are designed to simulate a car door. Generally, most rounds perform about the same uh, on, on the 20 gauge test. Almost every hollow point I've ever fired on a steel test is nail headed, which basically means it's a failure for the hollow point to expand because there isn't enough media taken into the hollow point to cause expansion. So you get a bit of a deformation, they call it nail heading, which is why it has that nail head type appearance. Uh, as far as the gold dot, the original G1, We had 
21 inches of penetration with 0.42 expansion with a with more or less a, a textbook nail head um, deformation of the round looking at the gold dot g2 on the same test two pieces of 20 gauge steel we had the exact same performance exact same performance 21 inches of penetration with 0.42 expansion nail head uh, which is anecdotally kind of backs up what I said. A lot of these rounds perform the same. Some people, some people are curious as about to why the rounds tend to penetrate more on this test than they do on some of the others. And really, the main reason to that, and this goes back to why ball ammo isn't necessarily a good idea for self-defense, is the less expansion you have in the round, the further the round can actually penetrate through not only people but intermediate barriers. So if you if you throw a round into a car or you throw a round into drywall and you have a failure for expansion, that round is going to fly farther. If you're using something super hot and one like 115 NATO or something like that, ball ammunition or a 115 hollow point, and you have a failure to expand, you can have even more penetration, uh, which is a concern. One of the main reasons for hollow points is, it, as an aside, it does create a slightly larger wound channel, but it's to slow the round down once it's done, it's gotten the penetration that it needed and it's done the damage it was supposed to do. Next up is windshield glass, and this is the second test that I'm always super critical about because windshields traditionally present the biggest hurdle for proper round performance over any other test that I've really seen, any common test, and of course inside the FBI protocol, windshields are usually the largest exclamation point on the performance of a round. So up first we're looking at the Generation 1 Gold Dot. We had nine and a half inches of, of penetration after the exit from the windshield with 0.65 uh, inches of expansion. There was some extreme deformation to the round. This is pretty much in keeping with Gold Dot's general performance through windshields. Now, it, nine and a half inches is, is it's not a lot, but it's, it's, a, it's a uniform performance from this round I've come to expect. It's still not within the 12 to 18 inch protocol, but if you look at the previous performance of the Generation 1 Gold Dot, um, you're not going to excel in every category, which we'll talk about more later. But let's look at the Gold Dot G2's performance through the windshield and see how it fared. We had 12 and a quarter inch penetration after exiting the windshield with 0.59 expansion the hollow point, abnormal expansion with fragmentation. So the G2 performed pretty well on the windshield. The numbers, what do they mean? You know, if a, if a round performs really well in one category but doesn't do well in other categories, is it still a good round for that specific purpose? It would be. Unfortunately, it's hard to predict in the environment in which you're going to need your round. So you want a bullet that's going to perform okay, at least okay, in every common category of testing, every potential environment you may find yourself in. If you have a specialized occupation or a specialized concern, you may choose a different round based on that environment for personal or professional use. I uh, know my personal opinion, like, the, the venerable 62 grain green tip. It doesn't do very well through windshield glass, but it performs excellent through vehicle body. If it's not striking a hard structure or weight bearing structure of the vehicle, engine block, transmission, um, things of that nature, it's gonna go through one car door and out the other side almost consistently, but it doesn't perform well in a lot of other stages. So sometimes you choose a round for a very specific purpose. As far as general purpose self-defense or duty ammunition, I need a duty round from a handgun to perform okay, at least okay, in every single category. And this goes back to the cautionary tale of just because it's new does not necessarily mean it's better. Uh, some ammunition manufacturers in recent past have put a lot of focus into improving the performance of their rounds through windshield glass because it has consistently been one of the hardest mediums to deal with. In doing that, they may have potentially reduced the round's performance in other mediums that may be more likely. Uh, my personal, my professional opinion is you're probably more likely to encounter heavy clothing than you are to have to shoot through a windshield. Just looking at the generalities of self-defense, I see more self-defense shootings happen out of vehicles and in vehicles, even though they do happen in vehicles somewhat regularly compared to other situations. And of course, shootings happen in home defense situations, SWAT situations, um, inside dwelling structures, businesses, homes, things of that nature as well. So all the tests are valid. It's just a matter of are you going to allow one clear performance gain outweigh anemic performances in other categories? My personal opinion is no. Uh, the Generation 2 Gold Dot is a good round if you look at it by itself, but if you compare it to the original round, I'm, I'm not impressed enough and I don't feel like there's a clear advantage really at all to adopt the Generation 2 Spear Gold Dot over the original. That's, of course, this was a 147 grain performance. Now, 
Uh, final thing we look at is, is how well does the round perform just in general as far as its general characteristics. Uh, ballistically speaking, it's a very accurate round. Comparing it from the, 120, or the 147 Generation 1 to the 147 Generation 2, uh, the rounds consistently shoot very, very tight uniform groups. Uh, based on, of course, my ability, I fired at 25 yards out of the testing handgun, which was a Glock 17 with modifications by Agency Arms, but the barrel is OEM. And that's what we're looking at is the Generation 4 OEM Glock 17 barrel. Other ballistic performance, I put it on a magneto speed. I wanted to see uh, what the pressures were looking like, what the feet per second were looking like. The Generation 2 is definitely more, the standard deviation, I should say, on the Generation 2 is, is significantly reduced from the standard deviation on the Generation 1. So it's a more uniform pressure round. Um, Muzzle velocities were very, very similar between the two rounds because they are both 147 grain, so there wasn't a clear stand out there, except for, like I said, the G2 does tend to have a better standard deviation. So when choosing self-defense ammo, uh, and I, this, this started last year, 2018, uh, people were looking at the G2 when it was coming out, and because it was hard to get a hold of, people thought it must be somehow superior to the original Gold Dot, and a lot of guys went to some pretty extremes to get a hold of some Generation 2, and they may not have had the means to test it, or there may not have been a lot of data out there on how well it did perform. Um, just speaking frankly, I'm not super impressed with it. I would like to see them kind of take it back to the drawing board and make some improvements. Its accuracy is good, pressure is good, muzzle velocity is good, uh, but its performance for inter intermediate barriers kind of left me wanting. Now. Until we make a significant breakthrough in alchemy, uh, I don't believe we're going to see great improvements in handgun or really any ammunition, ballistically fired ammunition, and, and like I said, unless we make breakthroughs in technology that currently don't exist, I think you're going to have rounds be tweaked to perform in specialized purposes one way or another. Uh, the elastomer uh, or a polymer, a polymer being filled into a hollow point for, for, to create uniform expansion is the latest attempt at improving the technology of, of self-defense ammunition. And it does help the round excel in certain circumstances, but it doesn't really, in, in my experience, the rounds I've used, it tends to have it perform a little more poorly in some other categories. And of course, which round we're talking about is dependent on which category that would be. Uh, but for Gold Dot G2, I, I just I don't think it's worth it. If you're already using the original Gold Dot, there's nothing wrong with the round you've chosen. It performs at least okay in every single category. Comparing it to the G2, I just the performance wasn't there. I wasn't really impressed. I expected it to excel a little bit more than it did. And really, it really only shined on windshield glass. I'm Aaron Cowell with Sage Dynamics. Train accordingly.